Hello Necromancers and welcome to our Warlock PvP guide for 9.1. In this video, we're going to be going over the Destruction Warlock changes in 9.1 and their impact in the game as well as which race and talents you should be running. Not only that, we're also going to cover the Covenant and Soulbind changes and which is the strongest in the current meta. And finally, we'll end this guide with some necessary macros you need to absolutely dominate during Season 2. And if you're looking for a one-stop shop to absolutely crush your opponents in this new season, look no further than Skill Capped. Over on our site, you'll find guides that perfectly follow up this entry level guide including our world-class courses that walk you through everything you need to know to bring your Warlock gameplay up to the level of a pro. We will be developing an upcoming course showing you how to damage, CC, use cooldowns, and exactly how to execute your playstyle to a standard that only the world's best players understand. In addition, weekly releases of arena commentaries allow you to keep up with the ever-evolving meta and learn how to take down some of the most difficult matchups. And if that wasn't enough, Skillcapped members get exclusive premium access to our Discord server, where you can question our team of pros with anything you need to know, all from as little as $4.99 a month. To start things off, let's talk about the Destro changes in 9.1. On the defensive side of things, we have the Dark Pack talent getting a significant buff. Its additional Absorb Shield has been buffed by 316%. This change is extremely significant and very welcome, since it makes rogue matchups a lot less scary because we now have a reliable defensive to use during their stun setups. It's still not enough to survive combustion combined with Ring of Fire, but it will still save you tons of cooldowns in the setups without those major cooldowns. We also got our new PvP talent to better deal with Queen namely Shadow Rift. This new ability puts a massive circle on the ground, teleporting any enemy within it to your port after a short delay. On the offensive side of things, Destruction saw a ton of awesome changes. Chaos Bolt now deals 40% increased damage in PvP from 15%, and on top of that it also saw a 10% flat damage increase in all situations including PvP. Focus Chaos has been removed though, so the damage ends up being about the same. The end result? We now have a freed up PvP talent slot that we can use on some new choices. Bonds of Fell is a brand new PvP talent exclusively for Destruction Warlocks that deals a ton of damage to and around the target player walking out of its circle. Combo this with Mortal Coil and you'll be able to force your target out of the circle, dealing tons of damage. Shadowburn also saw a damage increase, getting a 23% buff and now refreshes when the target dies within 5 seconds. This buff is nice into some matchups where you need more instant damage to avoid interrupts. And now with the changes out of the way, let's talk about how to set up your character, starting off with race. For Horde, Orc is the strongest choice by far. This is due to the passive stun duration reduction from hardiness being one of the best passive racials in the game, as well as having blood fury which is a nice damage amplifier that lines up with dark soul. For alliance, human is definitely the most optimal. The will to survive ratio allows you to break out of stuns and opens up the possibility to run relentless trinket, making you sit less CC overall. Gnome is a decent alternative to human. Escape artist removes all slows and roots, making it really strong for when kiting around pillars. It can also be comboed with demonic gateway to ensure melee won't catch up to you. And on top of all that, it doesn't share a cooldown with Medallion. And with that out of the way, let us go over which talents you should be running in PvP. Starting off with the first row, you'll always be choosing Flashover. This entire tier includes no situational or utility talents, just damage. And since Flashover gives you more instant cast damage and more reliable Chaos Bolt casts through backdraft procs, it's by far the best option. In the second tier, choose between Reverse Entropy or Shadowburn. You'll generally want to be running Reverse Entropy. However, whenever you think you're going to have difficulties getting casts off, Shadowburn becomes an obvious favorite. For the third row, run either Demon Skin or Dark Pack depending on the matchup. Like we talked about earlier, Dark Pack allows you to survive stun setups easier since its huge damage absorption. However, against consistent damage, Demon Skin will give you the most value overall. For the fourth tier, Cataclysm is an easy choice. In PvP situations, it can be used in a variety of different ways. Whenever a team is hiding behind a pillar, which happens quite often, you'll be able to hit all three enemy players. If you're against an army of pets, you can use Cataclysm to spread immolation, giving you tons of soul shards. Cataclysm can also be comboed together with Chaos Bolt and Conflagrate for big bursts due to it having no travel time. And now for the 5th tier, we choose Mortal Coil in 99% of instances. This is due to the Havoc plus Mortal Coil combo being so deadly because of its ability to cross CC two targets. For the 6th row, we strongly recommend Roaring Blaze. Similar to Mortal Coil, this talent can be comboed with Havoc for a strong AoE damage boost. And last but not least, we have Dark Soul. This talent is extremely powerful because of the way Chaos Bolt interacts with Critical Strike Chance, giving you huge damage with your burst if you're able to land casts. Most of your games will be won during Dark Soul because of how much it increases your damage. With the regular talents out of the way, let's go over the PvP exclusives. Starting off with the standard go-to talents, we have Demon Armor. Feel free to swap this one out for another talent when there are no melee on the enemy team. The second talent you will almost always be running is Cremation. Cremating your enemies does sound like a fun time, however, that's not why this talent is so good. Having a significant damage amplifier on one of your highest and most used damage abilities is extremely powerful. 
However, if you're in a matchup where you'll be able to consistently get Chaos Bolt casts off, feel free to replace this talent with Fell Fisher. Chaos Bolt spawns a Fell Fisher, which is effectively a mortal strike effect on the ground beneath your target. This forces them to move and is essentially free extra pressure. Bonds of Fell is a new talent you'll be running in a lot of your games. It deals insane damage but most likely requires you to give up cremation. Therefore, it's mostly used against comps where you can get full value from the AoE damage, such as against melee cleaves. On the more defensive side of things, Nether Ward functions as a defensive against casters. It's also really powerful against any comp with a priest since it allows you to reflect mind games, which can turn a losing game into a winning one. When facing cleaves, Shadow Rift can be really clutch. This new talent is really strong in the current bursty meta since getting a 2-3 second break from getting absolutely hammered by a cleave can make or break a game. It can however also be used offensively. And now with talents out of the way, let's talk covenants. Night Fae comes with Soul Shape which you can use together with Demonic Circle and Gateway giving you multiple options to kite your opponents. Her Warlocks often will hold their defensive cooldowns against cleaves and instead use the mobility of Soul Shape as a form of defensive CD. In this example for instance, our Warlock gets a triple Shadow Fury and combos it with a Shadow Rift to force the enemy team out into the open. The covenants for Warlocks are kind of underwhelming. Night Fae is still the strongest one, not because of the active ability Soul Rot which is practically useless and more of a damage filler, but because of the Soul Bind. More on that in a minute. After you've chosen Night Fae, it's time to choose the correct Soul Bind. The best one is without question Nia. This is due to Grove Invigoration, which is a stacking mastery buff that has a chance to proc whenever you deal damage. On top of that, Soul Rot will give you 8 stacks instantly, allowing you to use it as a damage amplifier, similar to Dark Soul. Karain offers you really nothing of value. However, Dreamweaver can be pretty good in some instances, like when you're playing with a Holy Paladin. This allows you to use a defensive strategy involving Pod Tender. Even if the seed procs, your Holy Paladin can use Hand of Sacrifice with the Ultimate Sacrifice Honor Talent to keep it alive long enough for you to resurrect. This is a decent strategy, but admittedly less reliable than simply playing Nia. And finally, let's talk about Conduits, the last last part of the Covenant system. Starting off with Potency, you're gonna want to get Ashen Remains. This is the only Potency conduit that really matters. The rest are rather weak, which is why we avoid picking a third Potency when possible. For your second Potency slot, you can freely choose between Soul Eater, Combusting Engine, or Infernal Brand. All of these are extremely underwhelming, so prioritize whichever has the highest item level. For Endurance, choose Resolute Barrier first. This conduit is super powerful, not only for reducing the cooldown of your wall, but also for making the enemy team's cooldown trackers to be wrong. Opening up situations for your opponent to make mistakes. For your second slot, choose Condense Animosphere. This is a new conduit added in 9.1 and is absolutely insane because it gives you small consistent healing over the course of the entire game. If you combo this small heal with effective kiting, you can really alleviate a lot of pressure on yourself. And finally for finesse, you'll want to start out with Shade of Terror so your fears don't break to random damage and demonic momentum for that extra movement speed when kiting. Next up, let's talk about how to gear your character in 9.1. There are multiple options for gear with a bunch of different stat combinations so how do you know which one is the right one for you? We use a term called stat priority which basically means we prioritize items based on stats. For Destruction Warlock, the stat priority is intellect and versatility, then haste, mastery, and crit. The new patch saw quite a few changes to gearing, most notably item scaling for PvP and domination sockets for PvE. All gear purchased with conquest points will now scale up 13 item levels, making it far superior to most PvE gear. Within Sanctum of Domination, you'll now be able to get items with domination sockets for new gems called Shards of Domination. These gems are nerfed by 50% in PvP, so they aren't completely necessary in Arena. If you manage to get your hands on a piece with a domination socket, just make sure it has versatility on it. Otherwise, your Conquest PvP gear is probably better. But don't sweat it, you don't need this new gear to be competitive. If you get it, great. If not, well, no worries. When it comes to enchanting and gemming your gear, simply just follow the stat priority list and make sure you get the Celestial Guidance weapon enchant. And finally, for legendaries, it's highly recommended you get your hands on the Cinders of the Ajakir. <laughs> Good luck pronouncing that one correctly. This legendary will give you the most consistent instant cast damage, something which is super valuable in a melee heavy meta. You can also play with Madness of the Ajakir, which gives you more damage and faster Chaos Bolt casts when you land consecutive casts. This is a bit more difficult to use, but works well when there aren't as many interrupts to deal with, like in 2v2. All good things must come to an end, but before you go, make sure these macros are in your toolkit. Starting off with Arena 1, 2, and 3 macros, these are extremely useful for fearing anyone on the enemy team without having to target them. To make the macro, simply put an at arena 1, 2, or 3 condition in your cast. To be a bit more efficient with your key bindings, feel free to add modifier conditions to your arena 1, 2, 3 macros. In this example, the macro will cast fear if no modifier is being pressed. But if shift is being held down, then it'll cast fear on arena 1. And finally, if control is being held down, then it'll cast fear on arena 2. And if we want our gameplay to be even more fluid, we can add slash CQS at the top of our macros. CQS stands for cancel queued spell and will do just that. This way, you will never be hindered in casting fear due to a different 
different spell being queued up. This occurs quite often if you are a player with high ping. And finally, to take advantage of the focus frame, we use focus conditions in our macros. In this example, our warlock has fear on the shaman while having the paladin targeted because he had the shaman focused. To do this, we just replace the arena 123 with focus. If you want to keep using modifiers to save keybind space, we can easily do that. In this example, the macro will now cast fear on the focus if shift is being pressed. Otherwise, fear will be cast on the target. And that wraps up our basics for Destro Warlock in 9.1. If you're interested in seeing more, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow, where we will be updating all of our content for patch 9.1. You can gain access to the rest of our class courses as well as our exclusive arena commentaries which take you into the minds of the best players in the world. As always, thanks for watching. See you soon!